Um, fifth point, uh, new media, social networking, sharing, a culture of sharing and shared knowledge, and collaboration are also part of this changing work environment. Um, how do we help students learn to participate in this? I think in the current environment, a lot of what young people and the students learn about uh, new media, social networking, sharing, collaboration, they actually learn outside of school um, in their interactions online and in virtual communities um, and in other networked environments. Are schools keeping up with this changing culture uh, that we see? I see a lot of young people in the audience. You know this better than I do. I see it in my son. Uh, his relationship to technology, his relationship to other people mediated through technology just looks very different. Um, than I think some of our traditional models of learning. Uh, and I'm not sure schools are keeping up with that new context. Uh, point number six, um, the relationship of learning to work is also changing. And I've already touched on this. I'll say a little bit more about this. Um, our approach used to be first learn, then do. Um, learning is seen as the preparation for the real activity that you're being prepared for, whether it's work or citizenship uh, or other aspects of life. Not everything is about work. Um, but rather thinking now about learning and relearning um, as part of the flow of work life itself, as part of the flow of life itself. Uh, in the first uh, paper that I wrote on ubiquitous learning, I had an expression that I, I really liked. I'll use it again. To be is to learn. Uh, it's part of life to be a learner. You don't finish your learning and then start life. The learning continues and follows through. So that's a slogan, that's a line. But how does that actually work? And specifically, how does technology, especially mobile and portable technology, support this, uh, this, this, this pattern of ongoing learning and relearning, woven into the flow of work, woven into the flow of life and life's activities? Uh, again, not only work, but citizenship, parenting, uh, and all, art, culture, uh, travel, all the other things that are part of life, a part of a complete life, during and again, as I said, after the cycle of work is over. Seven, a, a key part of this, it seems to me, um, is setting personal goals and self-direction, taking responsibility for your learning. Uh, that's a key part of being a lifelong learner. It isn't just a question of overt structures of support or, mo again, motivation that structure and guide and motivate what you are, are going to learn, but taking responsibility into adulthood to drive and develop your own learning. Uh, what does it mean to do that? And how do you learn to do that? Um, some of this is in response to changing work demands and opportunities. Some of it is a response to one's changing interests as a person, the things you care about and want to do when you're 30 or 40 or 60 years old are not the same as what you want to do when you're 18 years old. Um, and life, as I've said a couple times now, goes through different kinds of phases. Education's not all about work, but how does learning support the, the, the how does one take responsibility for learning that supports uh, and helps to drive this changing pattern of development and growth over the course of one's life. Um, one piece of this, this is point number eight, is what we call in English metacognition. That is the ability to reflect on and understand and think about your own processes of thinking, your own processes of learning. Um, there's a lot of evidence that metacognition and developing metacognitive skills is a really crucial part of educational success. Uh, but I want to move meta metacognition uh, out of the formal structure of education into this other pattern that I'm calling this ongoing continuous flow of learning in one's life. Uh, the skills of metacognition are necessary here. Understanding what you know, understanding what you don't know, understanding what you need to know or want to know, understanding how you learn and how to manage and direct your own learning when there isn't necessarily a teacher there to direct and guide and motivate you uh, is a crucial part of what it means to be a lifelong learner. Um, and, uh, and as I've said now a couple of times, we think, need to think about the development of the lifelong learner as itself an educational goal. Um, I'll say more about that also in just a second. 
Number nine, obviously technology is a means of diversifying and customizing learning to these changing opportunities, needs, interests over the course of one's life. I call this multimodal instruction. I talked about this last night. Maybe some of you were at the talk last night. I'm not going to repeat that lecture here. But we need to develop and think about and manage different pathways of learning that fit the different needs and interests and ways of learning for different learners. Um, we need to move past an approach of what I call a one-size-fits-all approach to teaching and learning. And as a person is learning to take uh, responsibility for and to direct and guide their own learning, part again of this, is pro of this metacognitive process is realizing what kinds of learning strategies work for oneself in order to take control and direct it. And finally, um, number 10, the workplace itself. The changing workplace needs to become itself uh, an, a learning environment. Um, uh, I think part of this is for learning environments to more, be more closely networked with other learning environments. And in my field, I will say especially universities. Um, I'm looking at this more from the university side. I've been pushing for several years now the idea at my university and other places that we regard our relationship with our students as also a lifelong